Hi, and welcome. This is the final update on Cross 11. This cross is the closest I've gotten to fixing the Snow White strain. Almost all of the offspring exhibit the Snow White phenotype, with a couple surprises along the way. For those new here, I'm Ivan, and I'm working on establishing a pure white guppy line. Everything started with Gandalf, our original white male. My breeding program has three phases, initial crosses, back crosses, and intercrosses. Within the intercrosses, I'm pursuing two main objectives, the stable snow white line and a specific iridescent forehead trait. Cross 11 is all about trying to fix the genes necessary to express the Snow White phenotype in 100% of the offspring. It is a cross between a male from cross 5 and several females from cross 6. Because this is the fourth part of the Cross 11 series, let's briefly recap. Back in June 2024, we introduced the parents, and now, after multiple fry drops from July to November, most are fully grown. In part two, we explored the potential variations in offspring phenotypes, considering we used three females. The key factors were the magenta and Storzbach genes. If any females carried these heterozygously, we'd see offspring deviating from the Snow White standard. Looking at the males now, it's clear almost all are Snow White. A few exceptions aside, it seems our C6A females were largely homozygous for the Snow White genes, contributing to this overwhelmingly Snow White result. The Part 3 update showed the brood strong Snow White potential. Because they were at different growth stages, future crosses were strategized early, leading to two new crosses with cross 11 females. First up, cross 15. Thorn, our C8 male, paired with three cross 11 females, labeled C11AF. You've seen hints of this cross in my outros, and a full video is coming soon. While this cross started with three females, I'll focus on Fry from just one, keeping the others as backups in case something happens to the first female. Next up is cross 16. This is an exciting experiment involving my half-black C9A male and a cross 11 female which I labeled C11BF. My hypothesis is that only the female fry will express the half-black characteristic. This cross will either confirm or disprove that theory. We've made significant progress with cross 11, leading to these two new crosses. With the strength of these snow white genes, I'm planning more crosses with them. But, of course, careful selection of the best breeders is crucial before moving forward. Typically, I'd separate offspring by phenotype at this stage, but cross 11 is remarkably uniform. Still, let's identify any distinct groups. Here are the 20 males, a mix of mature and sub-adults, all showing snow white traits. A beautiful group of males, but for a closer look, will focus on guppies from the 10 fully colored males, and assume the younger ones are on the same track. Check out this male with a unique yellow hue. I'm not entirely sure where it came from, and he's the only one with it. Some of his cross five uncles showed a bit of yellow, probably from that original female number three, but this male's got a much more even spread of color. Looking at him from the top, there's not much shimmer which makes me think no stores buck. But then, from the side, it's definitely there. Let's look at the topside iridescent coverage a little closer using a picture of two guppies. The top one is the yellow male I was just showing. Notice how he has an almost V-shaped region that lacks any color or iridescence that starts from the head down to almost his tail. This is very different compared to his brother on the bottom who has a very strong topside iridescent coverage. I no longer think that this is something that Storzbach is responsible for. I'm actually not exactly sure what is responsible for, but moving forward, I'll still prioritize full topside iridescence 
in future breedings. Here's a male with a slightly different look. He's got the snow white colors, but the coverage is uneven, and you can see some transparent spots on his tail. Looking from above, the iridescence isn't as strong either. A little better than the yellow male, but not as full as his brothers. This variation in topside iridescence raises the possibility of a new gene, for which one or more of the C6 mothers could be heterozygous carriers. From the 10 mature males, two exhibited reduced iridescence, representing approximately 20%. It is important to acknowledge that this sample size is limited, and therefore the statistical significance of these findings is low. Now, for our next crosses, I need three males. One will pair with a cross 13 female, and two with half black red rose females. I'll prioritize strong iridescence, even if it means compromising slightly on fin form, but the red roses will bring in the desired finish characteristics anyway. Here are the two males I've selected for the upcoming crossbreeding. These are nicely iridescent males, exactly what I was looking for. With their strong snow white genes, I'm ensuring that the next generation will inherit these desirable traits. I will be labeling these guys as C11AM. For the cross 13 female, I've chosen this male. His iridescence is exceptional, particularly the forehead coverage, which is key to my second breeding objective. A cross 13 male in my last video showed potential for forehead iridescence, likely due to an X chromosome link. This makes a cross 13 female the perfect match for this cross 11 male. He will be labeled C11BM. With that, these selected males are being moved to a dedicated tank, awaiting their females. The others from Cross 11 will be integrated into my mixed tank, where I employ a more natural colony-style breeding approach. Now, let's examine the 25 females. As mentioned, four are already assigned to Cross 15 and 16, and I use a flashlight to select those with the most iridescence. That leaves 21 females for our two red rose males. Right away, I had to set aside four females that showed deformities or swimming problems. It's a necessary step, and sadly, one of them was a female with truly remarkable iridescence. It was a tough call, but ultimately, we have to prioritize the overall health and well-being of the line, even when it means losing out on exceptional individual traits. Following a more detailed selection, I've identified five promising females. They'll be kept in a holding tank for a final assessment, with some reserved as backups. These are labeled C11CF. The remaining 12 females will be integrated into the mixed tank, concluding their involvement in the targeted breeding project. And that wraps up Cross 11. My core objective is a reliably true breeding line, and I want to see it happen three times before I call it done. I'm unsure if this cross meets that standard. Though anomalies are minimal, a potential 20% deviation raises questions. What are your thoughts? Does this count as a success? Anyway, if selectively breeding guppies like you see on this channel is interesting to you, subscribe and follow along with the rest of my journey. In the next video, we'll be closing out Cross 13 and discussing some very interesting results that I'm still trying to understand. Following that, we will begin the crossbreeding project with the half black red roses, which I believe will be a very exciting experiment. Here are some quick updates on my other crosses. The fry and cross 15 between Thorn and a female from cross 11 are slowly growing and I am anticipating a second drop from the female soon. Cross 16 between a half black snow white male from cross 9 and a female from cross 11 dropped fry this week and they all look very healthy. I established a new cross between Thorn and one of his daughters from cross 8. This is the next step to understanding Thorn's iridescent forehead. 
This will be cross 17. If you are interested in seeing how cross 11 started and what led to me choosing their parents, check out this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.